What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Doing a little film room preview of Steelers Browns on Monday Night Football. You know, a lot has been talked about this week uh, with TJ Watt going up against rookie right tackle Dewan Jones. But I actually think the biggest mismatch for the Steelers may come on the other side of the line uh, with Alex Highsmith against Jedrick Wills. Highsmith has had a lot of success in this matchup in years past, you know, six career games against the Browns. He's got seven career sacks. So I'm going to kind of break down some film. We're going to look at Highsmith, Highsmith's week one performance, uh, what Jedrick Wills did in week one, and then uh, some examples of some uh, reps against one another in the past. So I can show you guys why I think that Highsmith is going to have a big game on Monday Night Football. So. Just before we get started, y'all know the drill. Please make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. All that stuff is greatly appreciated on my end. So let's get into it, man. So Alex Highsmith, you know, had a relatively quiet week one game, you know, going up against a really, really good left tackle, probably the best left tackle in football in Trent Williams. And, you know, I, I wanted to bring up this rep right here just because this is one that he probably wins against most left tackles in the league. You know, the stutter kind of uh, Euro step cross chop. But Trent just does an excellent job recovering on that outside track. Um, Brandon Thorne on Twitter pointed that one out for me. And I, I just had to acknowledge uh, how freakish, you know, Trent Williams still is even at 35 years old. But, you know, Alex Highsmith didn't, you know, necessarily get completely shut out. Had a really nice move here on this outside uh, or inside spin move, excuse me that ended up forcing Williams uh, to kind of hold. He gets Williams kind of leaning a little bit, a little bit off balance. Uh, that's typically a, a good sign for an edge rusher if you get the off to tackle in this type of predicament. Um, and Trent, really, even though that's a good recovery, he basically has to just hold on uh, for dear life as Purdy kind of exits the pocket. So, um, you know, Hasmus did some good things in the run game. I would say that Trent definitely got the better of him, but that's that's a really, really tough matchup, guys, uh, especially to start the season. But wanted to kind of go back to look at some of Hasmus reps against Jedrick Wills, Brown's left tackle uh, from last season. Uh, and I wanted to start really with the week three matchup in prime time. Uh, no TJ Watt in this one. So this is something that I wanted to point out uh, when just kind of looking at the numbers, trying to make sense of what happened. You know, the Browns are going to come out and empty. This is a third down. Um, and they're going to motion Kareem Hunt over in line here to basically put an extra blocker to Highsmith's side. And, you know, you see Hunt kind of chip. And then they get uh, Wills kind of one-on-one -on -one after that. It provides plenty of time for Brissett to get the ball out, go to David and Joku and get the first down or get close to the marker anyway. But the reason why I brought this up is I'm not sure – that the Browns really trust Alex Highsmith or Jedrick Wills against Alex Highsmith in one-on-one -on -one pass situations. Uh, anytime they got like a third down in situation, third down situation like this, they really wanted to give him help. Well, it's easy to do that when number 90 is not on the other side of the field, right? Like they're going to be comfortable, you know, leaving their right tackle against Malik Reed or whoever else was, was over there. But with uh, TJ Watt, especially facing a rookie right tackle, I don't know how often they're going to be willing to do this right here where they're going to provide, you know, two blockers to his side. But, you know, Hasman did come up with a huge play late in the fourth quarter in that one. Uh, this is a one score game. And, you know, Wills gets out. Um, it's a pretty good jump off the snap. But Hasmith, you know, we've seen this over and over and over again over the course of his career. You know, he's a speed rusher, explosive off the ball. But he this inside spin move just gets more deadly and deadly every single season. Uh, just a really good job again selling the outside track, um, and then you know he he gets Wills kind of leaning here with a two hand punch. That's a big no no, especially against a spinner like this. Nice tight spin move brings down Brissett. That forces a punt and gets the Steelers the ball back uh, within one score of the game late in the fourth quarter. But, um, you know, these two also matched up in the regular season finale last season. Uh, Highsmith had a big game. One, only one of his three sacks came against Wills because he exited the game early with an injury. Um, but I still think you see like a familiar theme uh, with Wills and kind of some of his struggles, really, if you watch the tape. Um, you know, not just last season, but that continued into week one. And I'll kind of show some examples with that as well. But just again, this this there really isn't anything mystical with this particular pass rush. You know, he's really just going speed to power here. He does a good job, you know, playing with good leverage. Wills' hands are a little bit late. Uh, you see it, his hands are really, really wide. So Hasmus able to kind of generate some torque 
kind of roll him back into the quarterback. Of course, it helps with number 90s on the other side of the field uh, to kind of push him up in the pocket as well. But one of the things that I wanted to point out with Wills, man, and this I hate pointing this stuff out because I don't like questioning athletes' effort. But I will just say this. Alex Highsmith, TJ Watt both play with red hot motors 100% of the time. Wills, his motor is a little more, more inconsistent. You'll see him quit on plays and, you know, just randomly like kind of it's almost like his controller kind of turns off a little bit. And this is particularly problematic when you got a quarterback like Deshaun Watson because Watson likes to set deep in the pocket. He likes to extend plays. He's a playmaker. He doesn't really do as well or want to play within structure of the offense. So Hosmer's going to get some chances um, on some particular plays like that um, on Monday night, I would imagine. So I wanted to also take a look at uh, Wills' matchup in week one against Bengals edge rusher Trey Hendrickson. Now, Hendrickson and Highsmith are two stylistically different rushers. You know, Highsmith's a speed rusher. Hendrickson's more like a bull in the chata shop, to be honest with you. But you still see some of the same themes on Will's tape, uh, even when you look last week. You know, Hendrickson really just going speed to power here. But look at Will's shoulders, okay? His shoulders are almost facing, you know, directly towards the sideline. And one thing Hendrickson does a good job of is once he – uh, starts to get parallel with the quarterback. He understands that he needs to swim over the top to avoid getting ran up the arc. And then Will's just over and over. You just see him really struggle to kind of redirect and change directions um, on the on those inside track moves. And that's something that Hasman does really well. Um, and it's really all over his tape, man. Like anytime you ask him to kind of redirect to the inside, he just really struggles. Uh, so another example here, this is against a backup edge rusher. You know, originally, I think Wills does a pretty good job here. You know, he loves to set wide. He prefers to set wide, um, you know, on a 45 degree angle instead of vertical set. You know, he gets first initial contact right here. You know, he initially you see this right arm. He's kind of, you know, pushing that edge rusher up the field. But once he starts going inside, Wills just loses the inside track again, gets Watson hit. He allowed, I think, what I charted, like three or four different pressures in this game and as well as a sack. Um, another thing with the Cleveland offense, man, is they're trying to blend what Deshaun Watson likes, what Kevin Stefanski likes, what Nick Chubb does well together. And one of the things that you're going to see more of, I think, on Monday is a lot of uh, Watson in the gun, but they're also going to try to implement some of their play action stuff out of the gun as well. So what what teams will often do is they'll ask their um, you know tackles to be in three point stances because it sells the run a little bit better. And this isn't something that a lot of tackles are really uh, comfortable with. You see Wills right here. He initially is just going to try to get out of his stance quick and jump set Hendrickson, but Hendrickson just gives him that two hand swipe, boom right up the arc. You know he, that's a really quick pressure. Um, and really what it prevents is, you know, this big dig route completion on the second level because it was definitely open. But, you know, you can beat Wills um, around the arc with speed and you can beat him on the inside counter as well, um, depending on how he sets uh, throughout the game. And just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, just once again, I don't think that the Browns really love, um, you know, their tackles in particular, even Wills. Um, in these one-on-one -on -one passing situations. So right here, you're going to get a kind of a max protection look. They're going to bring uh, seven guys in. They're going to have both of these guys in Joku and the running back chip the edge rushers to make them rush twice. But again, uh, Hendrickson, just speed to power. And you see kind of Wills holding on for dear life right here. This probably should be a penalty. I'm not really sure what we're looking at here from the ref, but Watson slips and throws anyway. Um and they end up punting right there. So uh, just final rep of the game that I wanted to touch was, you know, Hendrickson, I felt like really wore wheels out over the course of the game. You know, just his motor and Hendrickson, he plays the same motor that Watt and Highsmith played with. I, I commend Hendrickson because he plays balls to the wall at all times. And um, Hendrickson, again, does a good job coming off right here. He's trying to give him a little bit of a long arm. And you, as soon as you see Wills's, uh, you know, hips and shoulders turn towards that sideline, you can beat him to the inside. So another inside swim move and Hendrickson brings down Watson uh, for a big time sack uh, in the pocket. So, um, you know, I think that a lot has been made about, you know, the decisions that the Browns are going to have to make. How much help are they going to give DeWan Jones, TJ Watt coming off a big game against San Francisco where he bullied a uh, backup right tackle? 
I just don't think that the Browns are going to, um, you know, just allow him to go one on one and tee off on this rookie. No matter how much they like Dewan Jones, no matter how much they trust him, I think they're going to have to send help that way, which is going to create um, some some matchups for Alex Highsmith to get these one on ones against Jed Wills, especially when he begins to set wide. That's going to bring uh, a lot of two way goes. Uh, for Highsmith to work with on the inside and outside track. So I'm pretty optimistic about the matchup. Hopefully the Steelers' defense rebounds. I think Highsmith's going to have a much more impactful game than he did in week one. Um, but if you guys like these preview-type film rooms, please make sure that you let me know. Drop the co- drop a comment. Uh, make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications on your way out. All that stuff's greatly appreciated on my end. I'll holler at y'all next time. Peace and love.